Gamer Alert! The following video contains spoilers for Act 1 of Baldur's Gate 3. Be warned. Where last we left off, I had stumbled my way through the grove, aligning myself with the druids because the goblins were mean and sucked. Now, I'm in the goblin camp, evaluating how to kill off their leaders, preferably one by one. The first place we go this time around is in the back to house him. He's pretending to be a bear, presumably because it means kids throw rocks at him instead of adults beating him with sticks until he dies. There's a big crowd of villains, and children, in this room. On my first attempt, I walk into Halson's cage and fight next to him, which ensures that we both get chunked down together by their superior numbers. <sighs> Restart. The second time around, I target this pair off to the side and open up on them. They bog me down while the children run in fear, but don't worry, totally good guy Halson is there to hunt them down like the wild animal he is. Or not. They totally get away and call more guards. They're not enough to turn the tide, though, and between this totally not a companion breaking my solo rule, Cave Bear, and myself, we can absolutely clean these gobbos up. Cave Bear is a total beast, hitting like a truck and tanking a lot of damage. Surely it's not that he's a relatively optimized build and I'm a walking meme. Surely. Anyways, he confirms that we're really weird and should be a mind flayer ten times over by now. Then he tells us the way to defeat the goblins for good is to destroy their chain of command. Duh. Exactly three of the most important people here should do it. They're also the most powerful. We can get his help if we want, but uh, that'd be a loud, straightforward fight, and I don't think we are ready to take on the entire camp with two people. So instead of do that, I go home and sleep. In my dreams, we are visited by a knight in shining armor who promises she's totally protecting us and that we should absolutely, definitely soak up and use as much Mind Flayer power as we can. As willy-nilly as possible because it's the only way to defeat, uh, something. Whatever that is. That is apparently coming at some point. I totally believe her though, let's juice up on brainworms every chance we can get. Some of these powers are tasty, and I suspect at this point that I'm going to need to use them if I'm going to beat these goblin bosses. Especially the hobgoblin. He wrecks me. We are led by True Soul Gut off to her private chambers for a one-on-one -on -one conversation. I'm aware that there's a way to cheese her here and get her deus ex machina out of the game without fighting, but that doesn't really fit the spirit of what we're trying to do here. Instead, I will take the noble route and cheese the hell out of this fight as Gary Gygax would intend. Attempt 1. We cover her in Greece, which starts the fight without any more preparation in place. Whacking her with our fiery staff sets the grease on fire, gut on fire, and uh, us on fire, and she is embarrassingly able to murder us herself before her reinforcements even arrive. Not a good look for your boy, let's run that back. Attempt 2. We grease her again, this time knocking her down. Making sure that we are not also standing in the grease, she then walks out of it and knocking her down is basically a waste, as our setup grease combo is now just not working. We get her to like a third health, and then she calls for reinforcements. Nothing to it but to do it, and we keep hitting her. Putting Gut down to 5 hit points before her friends arrive and she burning hands us from full health down to half. We can kill Gut, but now what do we do about the 6 additional goblins we're fighting? I run off to the side and force them to follow me into the room. Well, most of them. Two of them go and cut off the escape route I was planning around. I negate a ranged attack with my sick monk gloves, but I am still in a horrible spot. So I hide, buying myself maybe a turn until they walk over here and spot me. Still hosed. Until I find it in my inventory. Potion of glorious vaulting. This bad boy triples my already freakish leaping distance and I can actually clear this gap. I'm even still hidden so they can't see me. Dope. Perfectly executed. Until this guy pounds the drums and all of the goblins in my hiding place aggro on me. Not one to give up. I chug potions and work my way to the rafters. Maybe if I can escape, I can salvage this and return once the heat's died. Wait, why are, where are they? No, don't, don't pull the boss. That's not crap. So now I'm dodging their attacks all right, surprisingly, but there are 10 or more enemies coming after me. I spend a long time trying to figure out where I can even run to with this much heat. 
The main entrance has a lot of guards. Maybe I can skulk off and hide again? The spiders and the main guy are pulled, and now literally the entire goblin camp has become aggressive to me, other than Gut, who is dead, and the guys in the work pens, who are also dead. And Minthara, I guess, who is too busy by standing in the corner to join in the uh, whatever this is at this point. The giant spiders are still neutral, I think, so small blessings. I wish I could say that all this build-up leads to some kind of badass moment where I shove Drar Ragslin into the pit and escape or something, but uh, no, I just get obliterated as I should have expected by now. Attempt 5, skipping a few boring ones. We really start cheesing in earnest. I drop a small pile of interactables next to her, including a Void Ball, which will hopefully pull her into the area where we make other explosion happen. It works a little bit too well, yeeting me into the explosions too. I actually hurt myself more than her with this one, and then I miss my staff attack. She roasts me with burning hands, and I lose the one-on-one -on -one DPS race. Again. Attempt number six. We gently set grease bottles and void bulbs and explosives on the ground behind Gut. Even a smoke powder satchel, which should do a lot to get rid of her. Shh, shh, shh. Nothing to see here. Go back to standing still and not doing anything. I light the pile, hitting myself again, but also obliterating Gut. She's at like 6 HP, and before she can call her friends, I whack her with my staff and end things. Perfect. Flawless. Then I, uh, restart for some reason? I, I recorded this at like 2 a.m. Past me like, what are you doing? Well, okay, uh, uh, attempt seven. We do the same thing again? Setting up with the smoke powder and alchemist fire and a grease bottle. I stand a bit further back this time and don't get knocked over, but also Gut isn't nearly as damaged as last time. I hit her very hard with my staff though, and a flurry of blows is enough to kill her. Again. Good job, I guess. Apparently I just wanted to avoid damaging myself in the fight? Not that it really mattered long term, I have no idea what I was doing. Well, whatever. Next, I take the tadpole out of her head and absorb it, totally trusting Dream Waifu for no real reason at all. Seriously, we meet them the one time, but superpowers are pretty hard to turn down when you're one against the world. We are so all in the mind powers even that I go back to the grove and take that tadpole from Hausen's house too and plug it directly into our brain. Speaking of Hausen, we're back to talk to him. He expositionates about where we're headed for the next act, and then reiterates that if he joins my party, it'll be to murder every last goblin around, so I'd better be ready. We get a head start on that ourselves, picking off small groups where we can. We buy for the mercenaries, and then take care of them, too, because every enemy fought now is one less to get sucked into our boss fights. Thankfully, the goblins outside don't hate us yet, so we can go up and load some of their friends' stuff and our own random crap for cold, hard cash. Then we wipe out the lads guarding the entrance to the inner sanctum with some clever line of sighting and some lucky dodges from their plentiful ranged attacks. Taking the high ground comes in clutch, making it tough for the archers to hit us, and our punches are enough for the low-level melee guards. Drar Rorgain is surrounded by moose, but mostly suck if you aren't trying to fight them fairly and or in melee, which I don't plan to be. Minthara, however, is going to be a real problem. Why? I can't consistently resist hold person. She stun locks me and then kills me in two hits, usually in the same turn. Drar rags to riches first, then. We go back to the camp to rest, and also to have Volvo try to help us with our Mind Flayer Parasite problem. He uh, cuts out our eye in a cutscene I'm not going to risk getting demonetized for, and replaces it with a strictly better magical one that grants us permanency and visibility. Worth. Then we play fetch with Scratch. Back to the goblins. We pick the fight from the rafters, and then run away like a legend and a champion. Knock back arrows, throw random goblins down, and then draw a raglan barely misses the yeet into this hole full of spiders. Lucky guy. Thankfully, he climbs back up so we can run it back, this time murdering him with a good old-fashioned shove. Gravity, the greatest magic in the Forgotten Realms. With their leader defeated, the goblins are powerless against my cheesy hit-and-run tactics and just eat it to getting sniped over and over. Given how my last uh, attempt went, I really expected this to suck. But true to DOS2 form, Larian games love it when you use environments to break encounters, and this was no exception. 
I think I gave this a try earlier, but couldn't find it in my footage. And if I recall correctly, I only died because I got stuck between multiple enemies on the rafters. Rafters? Now, as I said, Minthara will not be as easy. Probably. She comes with a goblin ad I can't successfully kill before the fight starts, and between the two of them, hold person is, as I said, a 100% death sentence. I also kind of want to see if I can keep her alive, and recruit both her and Halcyn later. Is it necessary? No, I won't actually be using either character. But I just killed her last time, and we need to see if I can make it work here. For completion's sake. How does that work? I need to knock her out without killing her, which will mean she's alive, and in Act 2 we could potentially recruit her. So, I have two options, and I end up exploring both. First, the ogres. These bad boys are not party members, and as such do not technically count as breaking my self-imposed solo playstyle. They could honestly solo Minthara and the Goblin themselves, but it has its own issues. First, they will 100% murder her unless I step in. Second, when I knock her out, they refuse to stand down, effectively bugging out until either I murder her or try to fight them. And they beat Minthara, meaning they can absolutely beat me. Second up, we try Helsin. He takes Minthara while we soak the stunlock and then we beat her up. End of the day, I had a way through that didn't rely on him, and he isn't actually a permanent party member until later. We have to kill the giant spiders in order to unlock Door Regrettable and get another tasty tadpole, along with some mediocre gear. Then we loot his key, go to his treasure room, get some gold and some even more random mediocre items. Okay. We go back to the grove, where the tieflings are happy to see us, and Halcyn is very unhappy to see what's-her-name, the other bad pet druid. He kicks her back to novice rank in the druid hierarchy, and then we have a big party with the tieflings. As a respected loner, I refuse all of the debauchery offered by Green Lady and Asterion. By the hells. Sex, my dear. I smell their blood on you still. I smell your sweat. I mean to taste it. I'm officially Shadowheart hashtag Team Shadowheart anyways. Glances around at the party. She turns back to you. Mildly surprised you're still there. But I don't think I'll advance quest chains enough to really get romantic with anybody. And with that, we end this chapter of Baldur's Gate 3. Next, we will clean up some of the odds and ends in the grove, and push our way into the Underdark for a whole new host of problems for a solo character. And hopefully the end of Act 1. Happy New Year. Good gaming, and I'll see you guys later.